Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about closing the gap. Excuse me, closing the gap reports. Um, so the purpose of the closing the gap report is to find that group of students who might be slipping through the, the cracks somehow at your campus. Um, maybe it's a particular demographic group or a grade level or just a specific group of students um, that you know maybe they're underachieving. Um, Social emotional in a so, social emotional way, an academic way, or they're struggling with attendance or some other issue. Um, but we want to identify those students and try and help them. So, second, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And pull up my presentation here. So we're going to talk, we're going to learn about closing the gap action plan and report. The closing the gap action plan serves as a guide to address academic attendance or behavioral discrepancies existing among student groups. These gaps are identified through a review of disaggregated data for specific categories. The action plan details the activities and resources employed by school counselors to close the gaps. So the first thing we're going to do is um, discern priorities from the school data. So you're going to look at your school data summary and look at the uh, SIP, the school improvement plan, and review school data summary sheets to identify academic attendance and discipline needs. So you're going to look for you know, the, the group of students that maybe is struggling in a certain area. So for example, um, if students are not meeting expected standardized test scores or benchmark assessments, and that might be one particular group that's not. Um, if there's a group of students within a particular subgroup who miss more days than other groups for attendance, or students with two or more teacher referrals for behavior problems. So, um, yeah, we can, you know, we're looking at students in a variety of different ways. We're looking at demographic information, um, you know, race, ethnicity, um, grade level, um, a variety of different you know, things there. And then we're also looking at groups of students in terms of like performance. So um, behavior, like a group of students who has a behavioral issue. Um, and we wanna disaggregate data. So we're gonna identify academic gaps by subgroups, race, ethnicity, gender, grade, et cetera. We're going to identify attendance needs by subgroups or category. So specified number of absences, early checkout or late arrival. So those kids will end up in a group. Um, and then you wanna identify behavioral discrepancies by subgroup or offenses. So peer conflict, bullying, class disruption, site or time offense, et cetera. And you can take a look at the implementation guide for some examples on page 86. And you wanna dig deeper. So you're not just gonna look at the data and go, oh yeah, third grade boys are not passing the star in science. Um, and, you know, we think it's because they're boys, right? We want to dig deeper and try to get an understanding of what might be contributing to the need, gap, or concern. Get important information from stakeholders. So we want to talk to our administrators, our teachers, our students, our parents, and our advisory council. Um, a needs assessment may help to get an understanding of underlying issues. So giving a survey to students with two or more failing grades to gain an understanding of their mindsets and behaviors of the barriers to being successful at school might point to interventions for this gap group. So if you're looking, asking the students is a great way to try to understand what's going on. For instance, let's say there's a group of students who are commuting from a really far away part of town. And by the time they get to their last class of the day, they're exhausted and that's their study skills class for, um, I don't know, for prep for the test. You know, if we shift some things around, make it earlier in the day or um, work on transportation issues, let's say there's an attendance issue and there's some uh, uh, transportation issues, we can try to help with that. Um, sometimes basic needs or poverty is a huge issue in a lot of schools and, and we can often connect students with resources um, and get you know groups of people the help that they need whether that's connecting their families to a food pantry or 
um, a social services program that might help serve them, we can do some things for students that can help them. So you want to be holistic and really try to get an understanding of what's truly going on to fix the problem. Um, I think sometimes we can get lost in the data and things become so number oriented and data driven that we forget that there are people behind this and that as school counselors, we're, the, we're really good people to try and help with that to, um, to really try to see the human factors that could be contributing to some of these needs. Um, choose, so you're going to identify ASCA mindsets and behavior standards, and you're going to choose one or two of the standards to address the need presented in the gap. So you're going to figure out what the gap is, what the reasons behind it may be, then you're going to pick some ASCA mindsets and behavior standards to go along with that. Um, and then you design activities and interventions to try to help close that gap. So select activities and interventions that could address the issue, utilize evidence-based approaches rooted in the mindsets and behaviors. The intervention should match the need um, and might work according to stakeholders. Um, and then interventions should be firmly rooted in the role of the school counselor. Define and develop the measurements. So closing, the closing the gap goal defines the outcome data. The goal statement specifies the baseline and outcome data, um, and the outcome data is used to answer how are students different as a res result of the school counseling program. So how is, did, how is this intervention helping these students? Select the mindsets and behaviors that students should know to close the gap. Assess the mindset and behaviors in pre-test and post-test before and after the intervention. So you're gonna you know, do a little pretest before the activity, a post-test after the activity, um, and implement the intervention, documenting pertinent information. So, and then you're gonna go ahead and follow the template in the book. Um, the implementation guide is there to, to truly help you. And if you follow step-by-step step what it says to do in there, it can really help you. Um, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and show you, I think the template is in here. And so this is what the results report looks like. If it will load. <laughs> and obviously the purpose of this in a school counseling program is really just to make sure that, you know, we're working with the overall school and all the students in the school, but that we're identifying those gaps, those, those students that might just need a little extra help and we're providing the services that they need to meet those needs. So this is the annual student outcome goal. This is the school name. You're gonna put your mindsets and behaviors here and you wanna put your interventions, um, your plan, your data collection plan. So what are you gonna do about this gap? So first of all, what's the goal? What are the mindsets and behaviors that connect to this skill deficit or the, the, the mindsets and behaviors that they need? You're gonna do a little pretest. You're gonna provide the intervention, the direct and indirect student services, and then you are gonna describe your data collection plan, um, your participation data plan. So that's how many students are being served, where, when, how. Um, mindsets and behaviors data plan, so your pre-intervention data average, your outcome data plan, your baseline data, and then you're going to do that for indirect, okay? And you don't need um, necessarily four points here. One or two is fine. Um, and then your final data and percent change. So basically what you would want to do here is Let's say you have an attendance goal um, for a subgroup of people. And maybe what you do is you, your intervention is calling home um, and having meetings with parents to try to increase attendance. So maybe you do that. Um, and then maybe you also with the students come up with a, you do a small group intervention that addresses morning routines. 
And so before you would do a little, you'd pick your mindset and behaviors and test them. We'll do a little pretest asking them, you know, what they think their skill levels are. And then after the group, you would talk about the, um, you would do a post test asking them about the skills. Um, so hopefully they've grown and they have more skills related to morning routines and the importance of attendance and all those things or a plan for getting to school. And then you're going to analyze your data and ask how the data informs future practice. Okay, so that is the Closing the Gap Action Plan and Results Report. Um, if you have questions, just let me know, and I hope you have a great day.